Huzzah, and welcome future and current artists to another episode of Drawing with Dr. Doodle. Well, before we begin, you're only going to need two items. Hopefully you have these, a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, if you want to color your work in when we're done and you have a crayon or a colored pencil or markers, you can color it in when we finish today. However, if you don't have those supplies right now, you can always wait to color your work in when you get those supplies. So you know what? Let's begin. Hello. Today's episode, we will be uh, drawing something using a skill called foreshortening. And this is a picture of a foreshortened image. It's a picture of somebody sleeping, maybe sleeping at their desk, uh, maybe sleeping at their desk at, uh, during school in a class. Uh, but anyway, uh, foreshortening, for those who don't know, is the skill that we used in fifth grade, or will use in fifth grade, to draw our falling floating pictures. It's where we draw something where an object or a part of them is closer to the camera or viewpoint and so it looks larger than we know it actually is and well first let me just say to you that <laughs> I live in the city and so you're going to hear a lot of noise you might even be hearing my fan because it's getting warmer and you just heard people out in the park that's right next to uh, my apartment. Uh, so we're going to be hearing that. Anyway, getting back to the artwork. Um, the part of foreshortening that's important and that's hard for a lot of students to do and a lot of artists to do is that you draw what you see, how it looks, not what you know it's supposed to be like. So for instance, with this picture, you will be drawing the hand like I'm doing right now and you'll draw it how you see it, not how you know or what parts of the hand is missing because then it won't look as dynamic as it should or as realistic as it can. It'll look a lot more dynamic, more interesting, more realistic if you will follow along and learn how to draw things using foreshortening. So for instance, if you were to draw somebody who was kicking and their foot was right in front of your face, their foot, if you were to draw, it would be really large, and you might not. The, their foot might be blocking your view of the rest of their leg, so you don't draw the rest of their leg if you don't see it. And that's what's happening here. So as you can see, I'm laying out the shadows and here drawing each uh, line for the knuckle. And again, when you're drawing something for shortening, you're drawing what you see. So take taking your time is very important and also not getting frustrated so easily you it might not look nice initially it might not look the way that you know it should look but it will look the way as you can see uh, with um, this person's left hand that's their thumb that's on the side that we see right there and so what you're drawing is you're drawing again what you see and taking your time is the most important thing so right here i am just laying out the uh, shadows and and what you'll see with this drawing is that i don't color this in i i add some shadows to it i take my time it is detailed but it's not as detailed or colorful as some other drawings and that's okay you take your drawing to the point that you feel comfortable with or that you feel motivated to do so. So maybe later on I might color this in or maybe I won't and that's okay. Every drawing you do, every artwork you make is a form of practice. The more you create art, the better at it you will be. Yes, innate skill is important, but innate skill without practice just means that you'll be stuck at the skill level that you were last at the last time you practiced a decent amount. So it, it is important that you do practice. So as you can see, this is now the other arm in uh, behind the, uh, the left hand, so the right arm and hand behind that. And then behind that, uh, or being overlapped by 
the two hands is this person's head and and this is the the hairline so now that's the uh, shoulder um, the, the right shoulder and so it's almost it almost looks like a bunch of hills or mountains but we're not seeing the rest of the body we know the other parts of the body are there but we're only drawing what we would see and so it looks weird we're tempted i know a lot of you are tempted to try to draw the other shapes the other parts of the body but we can't see them it's the foreshortening drawing what we see not drawing what we know a, a better example that i can give you is remember all of you who are um kindergarten and a little bit older or when you were in kindergarten and like first grade or second grade remember how you would draw uh, a fish both eyes even if it was turned to the side because you knew that it had two eyes so you had to draw those well in foreshortening you would only draw that one eye that you would see if the fish is turned same thing with the human we're not seeing the other part of the mouth so we're not trying to draw the other part of the mouth so you can already see I've added the shut eyes, the nose, the lips, and now I'm adding shadows. Shadows, if you remember from the other lessons, are the absence of light. It's when light hits an object, a shadow is cast on the opposite side. So we see the shadow that's cast from the light hitting the nose, underneath the nose on the right hand. We see the shadow underneath the left hand, and the shadow below both hands and arm. We see a shadow uh, on the, um, the wrist bone, and we see the shadow on the left side of the face. And now I'm adding details in the shirt, and I'm going to just keep on adding a little bit more details and shadows as we go along. And that's the important uh, thing that you need to keep in mind is just creating these details means taking time and it means practicing even if you're not comfortable or confident you the more time you take in practicing the more time the more times you practice the more drawings you do the more artwork you create the better you will get at it and so i'm taking my time i'm motivated to add more details you can stop right here if you want to you can come back to it you don't need to you can be motivated maybe you want to draw uh, a person in a different pose maybe you can get yourself situated in a in front of a mirror in your house and draw yourself uh, maybe you draw yourself with your other hand your non-drawing hand in front of your face and you can see what that looks like and try to draw that and now what I'm doing here is I'm creating shadows and lines on this person's shirt because again there's light hitting it in certain parts and wherever it's folded in the crease is where the shadow will usually be because the light is hitting it on the other side now I'm adding more details and shadows for the hair. And as you can see, I'm filling in where the hair is, but there are certain parts where I have lines that represent the hair. So I don't need to draw each individual line for each individual hair follicle. That's another tool that you can add to your art tool belt or add to your skills. If you draw just enough lines in whatever detail that you're making so like brick lines let's say for a brick wall you don't need to draw every single brick as long as you draw enough you can leave some parts out especially if you color it in because it will be hinted at and our brains will fill in the rest and that's what we're doing here with the hair we're filling that in so when you're ready you, like I said, you can stop wherever you're at and you can take you can um, take a nice break and you can come back or you can try to work on something that's inspired by this. As you can see here, I'm making shadows in a different way, not just hatching. I'm doing something called cross hatching. So hatching is when you draw shadows using lines going in one direction. Cross hatching is where you have two lines crossing over each other in 
multiple lines doing that. So it kind of looks almost like a, a multiple part tic-tac-toe board, a very large one. <laughs> the darker shadows are formed when the line with hatching when the, and cross hatching when the lines are closer together. And when the lines are further apart, it's a lighter shadow. So as you can see, I'm gonna fill in the rest of the shadows here. And I hope that you enjoyed following along. If you need to, stop the video, go back. Now it's time for me, Harold, the extremely talented art critic to critique your artwork. Wait, what? Don't I didn't agree Dr. to this. I won't be too harsh. Why, thank you. Uh, what? Okay, Wait. fellow art detectives, let's get critiquing. What do you see? What do you think is happening in this artwork? What materials do you think the artist used to make this artwork? Does this remind you of anything? What questions do you have about the artwork? Pretend you can enter into the artwork. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What piece of the artwork is your favorite and why? If you could change one thing about this artwork, what would you change? How does this artwork make you feel? Can you explain why? If you had to describe this artwork to a friend, what kind of words would you use? So Dr. D, was that so hard now? It wasn't hard what at all, Harold, hope? thank you. Is how hard I will critique him next time. Until next time, future and current artists, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed creating art with me and that I've inspired you to create as imaginative artwork in the future. If you'd like to have your work displayed on, the sh on a future episode, obviously you need your parents' permission, but once you get it, you can email your artwork at thedoodledoctor at gmail.com. Well, bye.